Hello, welcome to this week's video. My name's Beth. I'm a pet portrait and nature artist. Um, I traditionally use watercolours, gouache, um, paints, just acrylic paints, you know, anything traditional, but my pet portraits are usually watercolour and ink. Um, so for today's video, I thought I would share with you some of the tips I have for selling pet portraits and also some of the mistakes and things I've learned along the way. I've been doing this for nearly 10 years now on and off so I think I've got quite a few tips and tricks to share with you and that will hopefully set you on the right path if this is something you want to do as well. So let's get into it. Okay so my first tip is to do the sketch first and then send it over to your customer to check that everything's okay. Um, I do this because if you put all your effort into just going for it, doing the painting and everything, and then they turn around at the end and say, oh, actually, no, there's something not quite right, or I didn't want this in it, or, you know, the positioning, um, the pose that the animal is in, anything like that, if you send the sketch first and check everything's okay, that will save you a lot of hassle in the future. If something's wrong, you can quickly change it at the sketch stage and you haven't put too much time or effort into it yet and it's easier to change and fix than once you produce the finished painting. Um, so yeah, I just usually do a pencil sketch of the outline before I ink it and paint it. Uh, just send it over to them and just double check to see that everything's okay before um, progressing on to the next stage of the painting. I find this saves a lot of time um, and hassle in the future. Tip number two is to take a deposit. So I never used to do this and there was a time where I really regretted it um, because somebody asked me to draw their dog for them. Um, they'd seen some of my stuff I'd put on Facebook and contacted me and said, I'd really like this drawing of my dog um, as a present. Uh, and I was like, yeah, of course. Like sent me over some photos, everything. Um, I did the whole thing and took a photo and sent it back to her. Um, and she was like, oh, sorry, I don't want it anymore. Um, which had never happened to me in all the time that I'd been doing it but a lot of my customers to start with were friends and family so obviously I trusted them to pay me um, and you know it would just never enter my mind to do that to someone but obviously like I'm an artist and I know how much time and effort goes into producing a piece of work um, whereas some people, you know, they just don't think twice about it and then she'd obviously changed her mind or, you know, didn't have the money and said, oh no, I don't want it anymore and there was nothing I could do because um, I hadn't taken a deposit, there was no contract or anything, so, you know, I just wasted that time drawing it. I could put it for sale, but it was of somebody's pet. So it was hard to sell. I don't think I ever sold it. I think it's still in the gallery waiting for someone to buy it because it was just not something anybody else would really buy if it's not your dog, I suppose. Um, so yeah, my second tip would be to take a deposit, even if it's just a little, like five or 10 pounds. Um, if you're just starting out, you might not want to charge much um, to build up a portfolio so maybe just five or ten pounds to um, secure like a place on your waiting list um, so then you know they're serious about commissioning you to do this painting or drawing or sculpture or whatever it may be um, and it kind of builds up that little bit of trust like you can trust that they're fully invested and interested in you producing this art for them because they're willing to give you a bit of money up front and then obviously if you've finished it and then they decide they don't want it at least you've got a little bit of money for your time and your effort um so to start with i just yeah i just did 10 pound 
up front and then I've changed it to 25% now of the overall cost of the painting um, because I do different sizes at different prices etc. Um, I just it was just easier for me to do 25% of the price up front and then the rest of it they can pay me once I've sent a photo and they're happy with the finished outcome um, so that's how I tend to do it now but um, I'm thinking of changing it to 50% just so it's a bit more secure for me um, and I think people take you more seriously when you're taking deposits um, they can tell you're more professional and you know you're serious about what you do um, and most services anything like this nowadays it's really common to take a deposit as well so it just kind of makes it feel a bit more businessy and legit which I think um, people are comfortable with now because I used to feel really awkward asking people up front for money when I haven't even started it yet but um, I kind of changed my mindset to now it's more of a professional business like thing to do which I think customers actually do appreciate um, so yeah don't be afraid to ask for a deposit and money up front I know some artists even ask for the full amount up front um, I haven't quite got there yet but I might do something like that in the future but for now it's 25% and I think I'll up it to 50% um, yeah so take a deposit so then people you know can't mess you around so my next tip is to be on social media which I think kind of sounds obvious but not everyone is on social media um, you don't have to build up a massive following I think at this time of recording I've got maybe like 1064 followers or something like that but um, I've been doing this for you know nearly 10 years and I have a steady stream of pet portraits so you don't have to have a massive following um, to get work it's just somewhere that people can come and search for you get an idea of like your style and the work you produce kind of like a portfolio I suppose but when I think of a business or I want to find out more about a business I don't know about anyone else but I just go straight to Instagram and Facebook and try and find them I don't tend to go for a website or portfolio so I think as social media is now one of the biggest things everyone's on social media it's important to have like an Instagram and a Facebook um, I do have a TikTok but I don't use it as much I mainly use Instagram because I take photos um, and I need to show off the artwork and Instagram is more of a visual platform um, so that's my main one and I like to post like behind the scenes in my stories and like reels of me painting and stuff like that so I've linked my Instagram and my Facebook together so if I post on Instagram it'll post to my Facebook as well so that's a handy trick to do more social media without more work you can link those two which is great um, I tend to if I want to do reels and videos I tend to do it just as a normal video on my phone because then I have the footage to edit and I can make it into a reel, I can make it into a YouTube short, I can make it into a TikTok. So it's not like specific to one platform if you just film it on the camera on your phone. Whereas if you go into the app and you know film a story on your Instagram, you can download it from there. And the same with TikTok, you can download it from there, but it will have the watermark of the app on it. So if you saved your TikTok and then put it onto YouTube, um, it would have the TikTok watermark on it, which doesn't look particularly professional. Um, but you know, you can do that to start with just to get across more platforms. But I think it's good to have a bigger presence so then people can find you more easily, um, especially if you're just starting out to be across as many platforms as possible. You know it's just easier there's more chance people will find you find your work and then message you from there um, I always put links in my bio to you know emails or you know DM me for commissions um, 
just make it easy for people to be able to contact you about your work. Um, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I'll leave my handle here, it's at Beth Frost Art, and that's the same across all of my social media, Facebook. I do have a Twitter, I update it every now and again, but not often. Um, TikTok as well, and here on YouTube you can see some of my shorts as well. Um, just as examples, if you need ideas on how to get started, you're more than welcome to take a look through and see what I do. On my highlights, on my Instagram as well, I think that's quite an important place to highlight your work. So I have like a work in progress one so people can see behind the scenes and, you know, stages of my work. Um, I have one for prices so people don't have to feel awkward and ask you for prices. If you make like a highlight of your prices and some examples of work and you know or how to order like the process of ordering um, that can be really handy as well um, again have a look at my Instagram and you can see which ones I've done um, I created a video I think on how I made my highlights on my Instagram and I like made them look more professional and used Canva to design like the little um, thumbnail images for them so I'll leave that link down below if you want to check that out how I did that I think it just if you have them all looking like matching I think it just gives it that extra professional vibe people will take you more seriously um, yeah so that'll be a good thing to do but yeah I'll leave that link down below if you want to check that out um, but yeah have a look and see what you think and Hopefully you can get some ideas on how to set up your social media or make it look a bit more professional. Um, my next tip kind of in contrast to the social media um, is maybe try and do a few in-person events. So markets, I do some like craft markets, I've done pet fairs, um, anything in the local area, people like local artists and local work. Um, so yeah, try and get out there in person as well. I know it's a bit of an investment to pay to have a stall somewhere and, you know, have a nice tablecloth and buy bits to make it look nice. Um, I make prints and cards um, and other products out of my paintings. Some of my pet portraits I've turned into cards, which people like because, you know, oh, that looks like my dog, I'll buy that card. Um, so if you have like a big range of paintings you can always get them made into other products to sell at markets and then have a section on your stool to promote your pet portraits maybe have an example framed and looking nice or up on a easel or something you know make it stand out and then have a leaf like leaflets business cards um, information readily available for them just to grab as they're walking past, make it super easy. Um, they might come back to you if they've taken a leaflet or something. Um, so yeah, just kind of showing it off in a different way than online. Um, you could always maybe make some leaflets and advertise in local shops or, you know, pop them through people's doors. I don't know if there's any rules about that, but um, yeah you know, advertise in your local pet shop or, you know, just think about places where your customers might be and maybe try and do some in-person things as well. I tend to find selling in person works a bit better for me than on social media just because social media now is so saturated with other artists and a lot of other like talented people doing similar things. So in your local area, it's a smaller target audience um, and you can you know chat to people like you can't do as well online um, and it's a bit more obviously personable um, so yeah I would recommend doing some in-person events as well or something in your local area um, just getting something out there that's not online so one of the other things that I do is I made a certificate of authenticity um, to send with my pet portraits once I post them off to people. So I just designed something on Canva, super simple, um, with, you know, somewhere I could put my signature so it's, you know, authenticating that it's from me 
um, you know, the size, the name of the portrait, you know, all of like little details and then you can sign off at the bottom um, and I think it's just a nice way to make it seem more professional, um, it makes it seem more unique and like a one-off piece of work um, and it gives this like higher quality to your work that I think people will appreciate, they'll feel like they've got a really good quality product from you um, and it doesn't take two seconds, like once you've designed it you can just reuse the template. Um, so I've made mine A5 in size and I just print it off at home so I can print two per page. Um, I got some thicker, nicer quality paper that will go through my printer so I can just print those off, fill in the details, sign it and pop it in with the portrait just as I'm about to send it off. And I think that just adds a really nice extra something um, and it makes them feel a bit special as well. So um, people are more likely to kind of come back to you um, or like recommend you because you know, it's this extra special touch and they feel like they're getting a lot more for their money. Um, so yeah, maybe try giving that a go as well. Um, and it's quite fun to design a template for yourself. You can do it in your brand colors or you know, add pictures of some of your previous paintings to it. Um, yeah, just make it a bit of you, a bit personal and something that the customer will appreciate. The next thing that I've done recently is put my pet portraits on Etsy. Um, so this was just another way for me to get my work and my paintings out there. Um, I already had an Etsy shop selling, you know, prints, um, bookmarks and stuff like that of my paintings, mostly like my nature and my wildlife paintings, so products I've made from those. But I decided to add a custom pet portrait listing to my shop um, just so people you know could find them a bit easier or I can always direct people to my Etsy for payment and stuff like that if you're worried about it um, people not paying you or you want it to be a bit more solid um, like if you're starting out with friends and family obviously you know they're gonna pay you and they can just bank transfer you or give you the cash or you know whatever but um, if it's someone you've never met before and you don't know and you want to get the money up front and for it to be more professional and proper, you can always direct them to like a shop or an Etsy listing um, so it all goes through properly and you've got evidence of everything and you're both accountable at that point. Um, so that's one reason for doing it. Um, and then the second reason is, yeah, just to get more out there and people are more likely to find you if you're on a, like a marketplace type thing like Etsy. Uh, when you're titling and, you know, tagging your Etsy listing, I would specify like hand painted, like custom, unique, all of those keywords. Cause a lot of the pet portraits that I've looked at on there, I just had like a quick I just typed in pet portraits and had a quick look at um, everything as I scrolled through. And a lot of them I think are the, they're just like Photoshop, like you send them a photo and they put like a Photoshop filter or edit them so it makes it look like a watercolor painting. And because they're not very expensive and the turnaround time is really quick. So they can't be like lovingly made, hand painted, one off pieces if that makes sense um so i think like they're obviously really popular at the moment so make sure you kind of really big up that this is hand painted and it's quality and you know a traditional artist not made digitally and things like that um, and they'll get a physical product from it not like a digital download or something um so yeah i think you know that has value um so don't worry about trying to price it lower like these digital really quick um photoshoppy ones um you can charge more because you're putting more time and more effort and you're using actual materials not just a computer um so yeah 
I would make an Etsy listing for your pet portrait so people can find you um, and it's just a bit more out there in the world and it will be easier for payments as well. So I mentioned previously in one of my tips about business cards so um, my next tip would be to always include a business card in your packaging when you're sending off your pet portraits um, it's just like a little reminder of your branding so it sticks in their mind a bit more um, it has contact details on it so if they forget you know how to contact you or whatever they can just quickly check that um, for if there's any issues or anything um, but also if they want to send you a message to say they've received it or that they really like it I get that quite a lot people will you know say oh I've just I've just opened it and it's lovely thank you so much so that's really nice um, and it's also handy that they have something that they can give to their friends or family you know if they're recommending you to someone they can just quickly give you the uh, give them the business card so um, that's handy because sometimes people are like oh I know this really great person like I'll send you the details or I'll try and find them or you know try and search this and you know they're not always guaranteed to find you that way or they'll forget to do it or you know so if they've got a business card handy that you've already given them they can just pass it on to someone else and there you go they've got your details so I think that's um, a better way to do it. Um, I just recently got some new business cards that arrived from Canva. I didn't know you could print, like get things printed from there. I don't know when they started doing that, but it just popped up on the side when I was designing my cards that I could get them printed. So that was super handy. I tried to design it and then get it printed from printed.com or somewhere but they weren't the right size and I needed to add a bleed and you know all this stuff and Canva just did it really quickly for me um this isn't sponsored or anything I just use them quite a lot so yeah my new business cards have just arrived so I've got an example of a painting that I've done that I'm quite proud of I've got my logo I think it's backwards for you um, but it just says Beth Frost Art and then it just says Pet Portraits and Nature Art. So that's the front of the business card. So I would always put something on the front like a standout piece that you're really happy with so they can see straight away that this is the style of art you do and if they want some of your work this is what they'll be getting. On my old business card I just had my logo on the front. Um, and then I think I did have an example on the back, but I think having it on the front is just, you know, straight away you can see what you're going to get. Um, and then on the back I've got this blue gradient side um, that's just listed all of my websites, my email, you know, um, social medias, YouTube, everything. So some of my shops, like I've got my Etsy on there, I've got my Redbubble, um, I've got my imprint shop. So just different ways people can get your products and contact you really. And then the image on the side is some of my colouring page images that I like to promote. Um, and it was just a really nice bright colourful image to contrast with the blue. So if you've got anything else like you could put another pet portrait on there or because I do nature art not just pet portraits um, I wanted to include something of that as well. So yeah, these are my business cards. I'd always do like double-sided. You get more information on just one bit of card to hand to someone, so I think it's worth paying for extra. Um, so yeah, I would get business cards so you can pop those in with your orders. And also something I've started doing is just writing little thank you notes. Um, so they've got the certificate, they've got your business card, and then you can just add in a little thank you note. You can design some in your branding colours, or you you know, you know can just do like a little hand written note to start out with, but I think that just adds, you know, your appreciation, thank you for your custom. Um, it just adds something and like a bit special, um, and the customer knows they're appreciated, um, and that you're a nice person, so hopefully, they'll feel more obliged to come back to you in the future if you um, if they want something else from you and that kind of links 
to my last tip really which is just to be nice <laughs> be a nice person um you know chat to them i always ask what the pet's name is like um you know ask them how long they've had the pet or you know just chat to them to make them feel a bit better and you know like you're interested and you want to know all about their pet um, because they obviously love their pet and they want a painting of them so if you show interest in that they're more likely to get on on board with you and you know like chatting to you and coming back to you and send you pictures afterwards of them framing it and things like that or leave you a nice review um, so yeah just be just be nice just be chatty um, if you've worked in customer service before like me or in retail like me um, you know you kind of pick up tips and tricks along the way of talking to customers just making them feel good but um, if you've never done stuff like that before just be nice and chatty and you know be interested in their pet because you know they love them and want to get them painted so yeah be, be interested in them um, and you know if you're nice and you're lovely they're more likely to come back to you and recommend you to people. Um, reviews are important, obviously, so you want them to leave a nice review um, that you can then share with other people. So it kind of is a domino effect. It doesn't sound like much, but being nice can have a really big impact on the rest of your business and how, how well you do. Um, so yeah, I've got a lot of repeat customers that come back so the thing with pet portraits is once you've done that painting um you know not a lot of people come back to you because they've got their pet painted and that's the only pet they've got um and they don't need anything else from you but if you're nice and you're memorable um i've had quite a few people actually come back and ask me to do you paintings as gifts for other people so their friends and their family have um, dogs or cats or you know whatever pet it may be so they've asked me to do more paintings for them but as gifts not for them um, also if they get a new pet at any point down the line like obviously these people that come back to me can be years apart but that doesn't matter that's still a repeat customer coming back to you because they liked you and they liked your service they liked your artwork um so yeah i think it's really important to build up a rapport be nice um yeah and just just be kind like it doesn't cost anything extra does it and it's nice to be a nice person so they were all of my tips and tricks for making pet portraits and making a business out of your pet portrait artwork. Um, I hope you found that helpful. If you did, then please give it a thumbs up. That really helps me um, reach more people like you to help them and, you know, share my arty journey and hopefully one day create like a little arty community on here on YouTube, which I'd love. Um, subscribe for more art videos and more tips and tricks, studio vlogs or, you know, just painting process videos. I do all sorts on this channel. Um, I have a pet portrait painting process video that I've already filmed. So I filmed the whole journey of me like sketching, inking, painting um, the pet portrait. So I'll leave that link down below if you want to check out how my process works with painting pet portraits. Um, and yeah, check out any of my other videos. Like I said, please feel free to have a look on my social medias. If you want some inspiration, follow me. I'd love to follow other pet portrait artists as well. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.